This video is going to be how to do the turtle shell photo prop that you've seen on my Facebook page. And what we're, what I did is I originally did it on the bigger loom you see here, the yellow loom, which has 41 pegs. But for the tutorial, I'm going to do a little miniaturized version of it on the 24 peg loom. These are nifty knitters, so if you have this set, again, you would use the 41 to make the size that I did in the picture. But for the tutorial, I'm going to use a smaller size. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove the yellow so it's out of our way. And what we're going to do with this one is we have to do, <clears throat> excuse me, we have to do the drawstring cast on. What this is going to do is help us to <clears throat> to actually close off the circle. Because what we're going to do with the shell is actually as big around as it is in the inside of the, the circle loom. So again, if you look at the yellow loom, the turtle shell prop is about as big as that or a little smaller than the inside of the circle. So that's what the idea of doing the drawstring cast on will make it easier for you to know excuse me, when the project is actually done. So again, we're going to do the drawstring cast on. So go ahead and grab your yarn and come back and we will do the cast on. So the first thing with the cast on is we do our slip knot. And since I have the nifty knit loom, I have this outside peg so I can actually attach my slip knot there. If not, you may have to hold it in your hand. Now, if you remember with the drawstring cast on, we have to work it excuse me, back and forth. So we start here and we work it back and forth around the loom. So you don't want to be wrapping it too tight. Okay, now when we work our way back to the beginning, you're going to lay the working yarn across the pegs. And first you can push down your string that you just did. And what you want to do is wherever there shows two, which is like here and here, that's where you're going to knit over. So grab your tool. Oops, I dropped my tool. Okay, so grab your tool and go ahead and where there's two, that's where you knit over. Again, it's the same process you're gonna do on the bigger circle loom. We're almost back to the beginning. Okay. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, we have one more to do here. The last peg here. Now we're going to do just one row of a simple knit. So grab your working yarn and we're just going to do one row. It's going to help it be a little easier when we do the, um, excuse me, the closing off. So just go ahead, push this down and do one simple e-wrap knit around. Okay, and once you get the last one wrapped, remember you can lock it in place by simply knitting over that last peg. Now go ahead and knit over all the other ones. Couple more pegs here. And this is the beginning part of the turtle shell blanket. When we, the next step involves a different chunkier stitch. So go ahead, push them all down, and get ready to do the next stitch. The next part of the video involves doing the chunkier stitch, which means we need to have four loops on each of these pegs. So we're going to be wrapping the loom three more times. But what we can do first is remove our slip knot that we put on here. We don't need it there anymore and we can actually tuck it in so that we can be able to use this to close off the drawstring. Sometimes it's a little tricky to 
Get it in there. Just want this on the inside because we're going to be using this string, like I said, to pull this project close. So again, we need to wrap this loom so there's four loops on it and we've already got one on so now we just need to wrap it three more times. So again, we're going to work one peg at a time for the chunky stitch. As you can tell, we've already got excuse me, we've already got three loops, one, two, and three. So you can push these down and you're going to wrap it and then take all bottom three loops over the peg. So wrap. Take all bottom three loops over the peg. And continue doing that all the way down until you get to the starting point. As you can see, I finished wrapping it and we got just this little bit in. Now again, this is going to close off to be the middle circle of our turtle shell. So how far down you go in the loom is going to determine how big that circle is at the top of your shell. Again, you're gonna, if you're using a bigger circle loom, you're going to need, need to go down maybe like an inch or so before you start switching colors. So I'm going to go ahead, because this is a small loom, I'm only going to need to probably do one or two more, probably one more row because I just want to make this kind of a quick tutorial to show you the basics of how to do it. So I'm going to work one more row in the chunky knit, and then I'll come back and we'll start showing how we can add the more detail of it looking like a turtle shell. Again, if you're doing this, this loom, which is the one I did it on, I believe I worked it down past the, the rim here, probably about an inch or so before I switched to the next process so that it would become the circle. So keep that in mind. The size of the loom depends on how big or how many rows you do for this part here. So now we need to outline the circle that we have going on here in order to showcase it as the circle of the shell. So we need to change our colors and I'm going to use a different color, green. Again, if you're doing a turtle shell, you probably would use two shades of green. So we're going to switch it off to use this. So what I can do right now is I can cut this off to do one row, excuse me, of doing the, uh, excuse me, the green. So I can cut my little strand like I normally would and keep the yellow close by or the uh, second color close by because you will be going back to that shortly. And now we can tie it. to the one we already have on there, getting it as close to the peg as you can. We will worry about the stragglers later because we don't want to get you guys too worked up. You can use that because we can trim them and hide them in the project later. Now what we need to do is we need to go around and just simply wrap and knit over just to change our color into the green being the outline of the turtle shell. So go ahead and wrap and knit over just like you saw me do. Okay, so wrap and then knit over and then come back for the next part. So I went ahead and I just did a simple e-wrap knit over. Now we're going to go back to the chunky knit. And again, this is going to help outline that middle shell. So until you get the bottom three loops over the top loop. So go ahead and do that and then we'll come back for the next part. This was after one row doing the chunky knit in the green. Again, on a bigger loom, you may decide to do more than one row to have the line to find more. But now what we have to do is we need, it's going to be a little tricky, because now what we have to do is we have to add in the second color while this color is still on the loom. But before we do that, we need stitch markers, and you need four of them. Okay, so let me see what colors I want to use here. Oops. is four. Yes, okay. So what we need is four stitch markers, like what I have here. These are the ones I have that kind of lock into place. If you have the other kind, you're going to just be able to simple, simply lift the peg off. So make sure you have four of them. And I'm going to lock it in place now. Let's see, it's just locked into place. Now what we're going to do is we're going to think of this as a compass. you got north, south, east, and west. So at four points, we want to have a stitch marker. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to lift off this loop and put a stitch marker. Then I'm going to go looking at it going up and pick another spot up here at the top. 
opposite of what that is. So let me get this untangled here. So I have a stitch marker up here. So I'm going to go down to this side, kind of mimicking where that is, and lift it off. I'll first get my stitch marker ready. Lift off the peg. And what this is going to do is create like this, the look of the shell a little more too. And then place this on. This is also telling us where to keep the green going. Oops. That's going to let us know that though on those pegs is where we need the green to go in order to make our lines. Again, on a bigger loom, you may decide to put two stitch markers next to each other to have it be a thicker line. So now if we've got one up and one down, we need one off to the side and one off to the other side. Let me look at it again, because sometimes I like to... Okay, so I'll do it on this one. And they don't have to be perfect, I mean, it doesn't have to be totally symmetrical. It's going to be different with each loom you do use too, but the basic idea is there. And then you're going to want to try to mimic this as close to on the other side as you can. You could place these on before the project even starts, but again, I like to put them on when I'm getting ready to do that. And now we'll just go ahead and we plop it back on. Now what we got to do <clears throat> is wherever our stitch marker is, that's going to be the green to be the lines of the shell. The yellow is going to be the meat of it. And now to know how far you have to go is when the, st the string we had at the beginning, this one, comes into play when we start to slowly pull that. You see how it's closing this off? It's slowly pulling it and we're slowly getting this to close off. And now, this could actually, if I would have did it shorter, we would have been able to do it smaller, but I need to do it a little bigger to show you. On the bigger loom, it's going to take a little longer to do this. But now we need to alternate our colors. So now, again, wherever these stitch markers are is where we keep the color green, and where it's not, we switch and use the yellow. So we're going to add them both on. We're going to add it on, creating our slip knot again. Now, because we need these to be yellow, I'm going to place it on here. Give it a little tight. And now we need to wrap. And keep in mind, where the stitch marker is, is green. Where it isn't, is yellow. So that means you're going to be switching colors back and forth. So it gets a little tricky and can get a little tangled. So just be careful when you're doing that. Take your time and make sure that probably you have them rolled up as balls of yarn instead of from the skein will make it probably a little easier. So again, I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to wrap until I get to there and I can go ahead and knit over. And we're even going to knit over the stitch marker one, or the first one we did. And this is just to help switch the color because soon we're going to be keeping up with the chunky stitch. So we need to make this easier to go back and forth. So right now we're just doing a single stitch, but then we'll switch. Now we take our green and we wrap this peg. And we can go ahead and knit it over. Okay. Go back to our yellow. And knit the ones that aren't with the stitch marker. Keeping the other yarn, if we can, out of the way. So what you're going to do now is that's all you're going to do. You're going to alternate back and forth. But we do need, once we get around this time, we do need to do a chunky stitch again. So we're going to need to be careful about how we go back and forth with wrapping then. Right now it's kind of more manageable because we're just doing a single knit. But when we have to switch it around to doing the chunky, it's going to be a little more tangled. And as you can see, it's going to create these lines on the inside. And how many times you do this, again, depends on the circle loom that you're going to use. And that's the only advice I can give you. A bigger loom, you're going to probably do more to be the lines than you would if it was a smaller loom like this. Like, I actually probably did too much yellow for this size loom. But again, this is just to show you how to do it. And the reason this isn't a good regular blanket is because of the way the strands look on the inside. Okay. 
Now the tricky part is getting ourselves to do the chunky knit now. And usually this is easier when I have this sideways versus having it flat down. Typically when I would do this, I would have it like this, working back and forth. I wouldn't have it flat like we see here. So go ahead, push all these down, because now we need to do the chunky knit for a little bit. And for this tutorial, I'm only going to do like one row of chunky knit just to show you how to do it. And then we'll take it off and show you the project that way. Again, it's going to change when you're on a bigger loom, so keep that in mind that you will do more of this. This is just to give you the basic idea of how I did it. It may alter again, depending on the loom you use. So now make sure you have your extra yarn available. And again, we have this strand, so if we go pulling on this, this is almost closed off. So now what we need to do is we need to do chunking it, which means we need to have four loops on each peg in order to do the three over one. So we're going to start with our yellow, or our green, sorry. Finding where my working yarn is. And again, you will get lines, excuse me, lines in here. That's why I wouldn't use it as a regular blanket, or more as a photo prop. So now what we need to do is we need to grab our working green, which is right here. And now we need to go ahead, and what we can do, I believe this will work, is go ahead and just make sure the yarn is out of the way. So we need that one wrapped once. And we need our other yellow to go ahead and work the yellow. Switch back over to the green to wrap that one. Switch back to the yellow to wrap this one. And again, try to keep the yarn out of your way as much as possible. You can hold it in place, grab your green back again. Good way to stitch marker. I mean, it looks tricky, but again, I'd be holding this different, so it would be a little easier the other way of holding it, which is sideways, because then you'd be able to work them a little, a little easier as you're going around. This is our third one going around. And again, it helps if you push these down out of your way. Give yourself extra room. on the one that you actually need. Now again, what's going to be easier is now that we're getting ready to do our fourth time around is we can knit over as we go, which will make it a lot easier. So we can bring this one over, and since we have enough on there, we can take the bottom ones. Okay, we can take the bottom ones over the top. And that will help lock that into place a little easier. Grab your yellow, push these down. So it gets a little tricky when you're working with both. There may be an easier way. This is just honestly the way I had did my turtle shell thing. Okay.
but it is easier when you can work one peg at a time for the fourth time around. Oops, wrong one. around here. So finish this up and you'll be back to the beginning again. So once you get back to the beginning it should look it looks like a mess on this side but it's this side that you're caring about. As we close this off more, you can see that there's our inner circle, there's our outline of the circle, and you can see the start of the other points of where we did the green. So that's what the idea is to do. Once you get this tightened enough, which is pretty much tightened now, you would take a crochet hook and you would tie off this circle. It should close off pretty close to being done and then you just have to find a loop and just kind of tie it off so that it won't come undone. What I like to do is I like to do it in a couple different spots. You can even do one little knot just in the center. And once you get that done, you can just trim this out. Like I said, that's why we do the drawstring because it shows us now we have the middle and now we're starting to work this. But because this is a small loom, just keep going until you get those lines down as far as you want in the project. Because as you can see, what we're doing is creating the pockets in here. And when you're ready, now I'll show you the next couple steps that you would do to finish this off. Again, it's going to be different on a different size loom. So again, as you can see, we started to get our green in there, but I'm going to go ahead and show you what the step after that would be. What that means is we don't need the yellow anymore because now we're going to end up taking it off the loom because we've got it down as far as we would want. So what we're going to do is we need to go around with the green loom or green yarn to fi finalize our project, which means we have to find <coughs> We're going to need to tie this onto our yellow when we get to it. But instead, we're just going to simply wrap until I find where my starting yarn is, which is right there. So we're going to wrap. Oh, wait a minute, I think I did that wrong. Wrong way. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go back here. Excuse me. And now we're going to get ready to close this off and knit over these. And again, this would be different because you would do more on a, on a bigger loom. do that until you find, now since our green and yellow are now together, we're going to go ahead and trim our yellow, move it out of the way because we're done with that now. So I'll just bobbly it over here. It does get a little tangle, tangling going on. Go ahead and tie these two together because you don't need the yellow anymore. Again, figure out how far you want the lines of the design to go down and then you can do this part. Oops. I usually give it two knots. Leave it in there and I gotta find there. 
Okay, now we just, we're working back with one strand. So again, work your way down until you show the definition of the lines by doing the green alternating back and forth kind of thing. And then you're gonna switch back to your green to outline the shell totally. So now you can just go ahead and we're gonna do the chunky knit. So you're gonna go around and you're gonna wrap it so that it is, again, four loops on each peg. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna wrap and come back when there's four loops on a peg. Actually what we need to do is we need to go around until all we see is green here, just doing the simple e-wrap stitch. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wrap around and knit over one more time so that all I see is the green and then I'll come back. So it should look like this and you're just gonna go ahead and knit over so that all we have left is green on the loops and then we'll move on to the next step. Once it looks like this, go ahead and push them down and you're gonna do one row of the chunky knit again. And again, if you're using a bigger loom, you may have to do more than one row to make it look proportioned. So I push these all down. I'm gonna go ahead and wrap the loom so there's four loops on each peg and knit over the bottom three over the top one. And then I'll meet you back here for the last step. I'm on to the last few rows of doing the chunky knit. Okay. And then we can move on to taking this off the loom. You can use a crochet hook to take it off or we can use our easier crochet method to take it off. And again, how many loops you do in between kind of depends on the loom. The bigger the gauge, you're going to need to do more loops. I believe with the yellow loom that I did this on, I did, I believe, three in between. But this one, I'm only going to do two in between. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm going to actually do the easier crochet cast off to take this off the loom. Now it's time to take the project off. You will need a crochet hook at the end, but for right now we can use our knitting tool and do the crochet cast off like I did on my other videos. So we're gonna take the yarn, we're gonna rewrap our first peg, knit it over, and we actually don't need the stitch markers so you can remove them to get them out of your way. Knit over, we're gonna do it twice, for this peg, or for this loom, but you may need to do it more for another. So we knit it over twice, and I'm gonna move it over to the one next to it. I'm going to knit over, wrap it once, wrap it twice, move over, Knit over, rewrap it once, rewrap it twice. Go ahead and keep doing this until you get to the end of the loom. Bring down to the last few pegs. Get ready to move this one over. Now we need to knit over twice. After we knit over that one, we go one, two, Move over, when you get to the last peg you will need your crochet hook, oh, this one's really, okay, get up there, alright, knit over, okay, now take your crochet hook and take that loop and put it on your crochet hook now. Remove your loom. Okay. I still need to do your two chains in between to get because we have to now connect these two. So get your working yarn in front and do one. Oops, get back in here. Do one. Do two. Go over to the beginning and put your loop, your crochet hook in and then take the back over the front to help lock that in place. And now trim your working yarn. And you can go ahead and work that working yarn through that loop. 
give it a little tug. And what I like to do is I like to do a little knot. And then again, you can trim it. And what that becomes, and you can fix all your, it becomes our turtle shell. Now, I probably should have did more chains in between. What I did before is I kind of curled it up, as you see I'm doing here. I curled up those crochet loops up. But if I can't, you won't see the detail, but see when we did the lines, we've got our lines here that become our shell. And again, I did too much yellow on this size loom. I should have did less rows, and you would see more of a center circle. And then again, you would do more of this work right in here that we did to make it bigger. And then you'd have your crochet things. And what I did before when I did it, and I would suggest probably like three loops. And again, these two yarns are not really the same thickness. If you look, this one's a little thicker than that one, and that changes the project some too. So try to make sure your two alternating colors are like the same kind of weight of yarn, like both threes or both fours, so that they'll look more cohesive. And when you do your crochet things, what I did before that one is I kind of tilted it up because obviously it was bigger and you could see more. And if you tilt it up, the crochet creates a cute little edge. And then you can kind of pull it out like I did with the other one. I kind of pulled it out. But again, the reason you can't see this when I do that this time is because I didn't. we didn't do more rows of this. So remember, when you do it on this loom, you're going to be doing more rows of it. And a lot of it you can eyeball yourself too when you get going. And the thing is, you could turn this into a turtle shell hat if you wanted because you would just keep working down and as you see it almost looks like a hat anyway the way we have it so you could keep going down and make it look more like a turtle shell hat if you had wanted to as well so I hope this helps I know some people like it when you do it on the loom I did it on but for tutorial sake I needed to do a smaller loom but as you can see it would look like more like a turtle shell once you do more of these rows and I would have did less of that so I hope this helps and have a great night or day.